Hello everyone, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are going to be talking about how to draw and define anti-pads in Altium Designer. Now I got a great question on one of my videos about drawing anti-pads, and this is not the first time this question has come up. And I think there are quite a few people who wish that Altium had an automated feature for drawing anti-pads on vias. Now, unfortunately, that feature doesn't exist yet, but it might exist in the future. But until then, there are actually some really simple ways that you can define anti-pads on vias in your high-speed design. So I'm gonna show you how to do it in Altium. Let's go ahead and get started. So before we get started, let's take a look at that viewer question. Robert88KAL writes, how do you define an anti-pad in Altium? Great question, Robert, and there are basically three ways to do it, no matter which CAD tool you're using. The first way you can do it is with your design rules. You can set up clearances that will put an anti-pad in your polygon or your plane layer that you're using for your ground plane. Another way to do it is by drawing out the anti-pad as a keep out, and that will also enforce a clearance on all of the layers and thus cut out the copper from the ground plane, creating your anti-pad. Another way you can do it is to draw a polygon cutout. The polygon cutout method will essentially just pull out that shape from the polygon and prevent it from filling in with copper, and that also creates your anti-pad. The corresponding way to do this with plane layers is, of course, to just draw the opening that you want with the drawing tools. They're basically the exact same approach. So let's go ahead and jump into Altium. I'll show you all three ways to do it, and it's incredibly simple, so make sure to follow along. So to illustrate how and why we should use some of these different methods for drawing anti-pads, I have here an example PCB where it's going to basically plug into an edge connector. And on the top and bottom layers, we have some copper pads. And those copper pads are, of course, going to break off to some signal. So you can see here we've got copper pads on each side and they're offset just a little bit on the top and bottom layer. Now, the other thing that we have here is, of course, we have some blind vias. We have blind vias going from layer 10 to layer nine. And then here, I haven't drawn them in, but you could basically do the same thing. You could have blind vias going from layer one to layer two. Now, you can already see there's a reason that we would want to use blind vias with this particular type of design, because as you can see, if I draw out some traces going to the right and I pass the signal into the inner layers of the PCB right in this region, there is a risk that my through holes on the top side will hit traces on the bottom side. So we might not want to use through holes in this type of design. We would instead prefer to use blind vias. So depending on whether you're using blind vias or through hole vias, that's really gonna determine what is the appropriate method to draw the anti-pads on those vias. Not all signal vias need anti-pads. I've discussed when you need to have a precisely designed anti-pad in terms of via impedance. And there are some other videos linked in the description all about those points. So make sure to go check out those videos in the description. Now, if you're ready to start drawing anti-pads, let's go ahead and just dig in and look at some simple ways to do this. Let's just suppose that I have a through hole via and I'm just gonna go ahead and put it right here. And we'll go ahead and assign it to a signal net. We'll go ahead and assign it to, just for example, RX1P. Now, if I drag it over here into this part of the board, and then I go ahead and re-pour all the polygons. You can see here that we have a clearance rule, which by default pulls back some of the copper around that via. Now, how do we control how big that copper is? Well, there are a couple of different clearance rules that we can use, but this spacing between this pad and the surrounding copper, that is our anti-pad. So we can go ahead and control that for the design rules just using the built-in rules and constraints editor. So here I am inside the PCB rules and constraints editor. And if you want to use the clearance rules to create your anti-pad size around a via, all you need to do is click on the advanced option and then you need to change the poly to via distance. So here you can see it's set to four mils. I can set it to, for example, 20 mils. And as soon as I hit okay, you can see here we immediately get this clearance error just like we would expect. And if I just re-pour all the polygons, there you go, we get our big anti-pad with a 20 mil distance between the via pad edge and the polygon. Is this the right way to do this? Is this the best way to do this? Well, 
You can see here that if I start scrolling through the layers, it automatically enforces this on every single layer. Now, with precisely engineered anti-pads for different types of signals, whether it's for RF signals or differential signals, you may not need to have the same anti-pad size on all layers. Sometimes the anti-pad on the internal layers may need to be a lot larger than closer to the outer layers. But using the clearance rule will basically set the exact same anti-pad size on all layers. Now you can get around that by using some of the via query rules, or you could use one of the on layer rules. So it will only apply that rule to specific layers. Now that's where it gets very complex because here this is a 10 layer PCB. And with this being a 10 layer PCB, we would basically need to have 10 different queries in order to set the anti-pad size on 10 different layers if we wanted to use the design rules to define our anti-pads. So if you only have very simple anti-pad sizes that you need for a through-hole via, then go ahead and use the design rules. It's going to automatically put that same anti-pad size everywhere. Unfortunately, if you need to have anti-pads on specific layers with specific sizes, you're going to have to get a little more granular, and that's where you need to use the drawing tools. So first, let's go ahead and look at drawing a keep out, and then we can look at how to draw polygon cutouts in order to define anti-pads. Now let's take a look at this single-ended via again. In order to draw an anti-pad around this single-ended via, we can use the keep out layer. And to draw the keep out layer, of course, you need to turn on the keep out layer in the view configuration, then select it as your active layer, and then you go up here to the drawing tools, and then you can start drawing out the shape of your keep out. So here, I'm just going to select arc with center because I want to draw a complete circle. And then you can see here, I just click through it and it puts an arc. Now, of course, it didn't put the full 360 degrees. That's okay. I can go back in and edit this and then I can go ahead and set the radius that I want. Now, make sure to also set the appropriate width for this keep out. Here, I'm just going to set zero. And then here we want to select the objects that we want to restrict. So here we're going to uncheck via track SMD pad and through hole pad. So we only want to keep out the surrounding copper, in this case, all of the copper pour from this keep out. So now that I've placed this, when I go ahead and re-pour all the polygons, you can see here that it enforces a clearance around the keep out plus a little bit of margin. Now you can see here again with keep outs, when I cycle through the layers, you can see that it exists on all layers. Now, how do we eliminate that margin? Well, to do that, we have to go up into the design rules and we need to create a new clearance rule. And that new clearance rule is going to be assigned just to keep outs. So to do that, we're going to use a custom query and we're just going to type in is keep out. And you can see it auto fills. Once we do that and we set our minimum clearance to zero and then hit OK, we can then go back in and re-pour all the polygons. And now you can see here it collapsed the copper pour around just exactly to that keep out. And now we have the exact anti-pad size that we want around this via. Now this is another great way to place an anti-pad of the same size on all layers, which would make sense if you need to apply that to a through-hole via like you see here on screen. Now what if we want to do the same thing but on these differential vias here that you see on the bottom layer? Well, this is important because you can see here that the default clearance rule allows for these little juts of copper to come in in between the differential signal vias. And so to eliminate that, we would then want to use a keep out that has a straight line along it going to the right of these vias. Now to do that, what I've done is I've created some semicircular keep out arcs, as you can see up here on the top side of the board. And I can just copy and paste those onto these vias. You can see here, I just rotate one of them 180 degrees. I go over to my keep out layer, and there you go. You can see my arcs for my keep out. Next thing I'm gonna do is just draw lines to connect these arcs. Now they're all connected. So now that this is all connected, I can then select this, I go to tools and then convert, and I want to create a region from selected primitives. And there is my region. So I want to deselect this region, delete the original lines, and now that is my keep out. If I just go to TGA to re-pour all the polygons, 
You can then see here that this keep out enforces this clearance again on all of the layers for these differential vias. Now, if we have through hole differential vias, this would make perfect sense because we may want to ensure that we have the exact same size anti-pad on all of the layers in our layer stack. But of course, in this case, you can see that we have blind vias. So what's the best way to deal with anti-pads or to place anti-pads if we have blind vias or buried vias? Well, that's where we would want to use a polygon cutout. Now to place these anti-pads as a polygon cutout, we can of course basically use the same approach, but instead of drawing in the keep out layer, we just draw in one of our signal layers. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these same semicircle sections here, and I'm just gonna move them onto one of the signal layers. So I'll move them onto the bottom layer. And we're gonna use these arcs to then draw out our polygon cutout. So doing that is really simple. I just copied it using the center as the reference. Here I'm gonna paste it, and here I'm gonna paste it on the bottom via as well. And then I'm also going to use those drawing tools to then just draw across from the bottom semicircle to the top semicircle. And then you can see here, we've completed this region. So now you just go ahead and select all of these arcs and lines, and then we go to tools, convert, and then we need to create a region from the selected primitives. Now notice here, if I go ahead and just clear the error markers, you can see here that it keeps those original arcs and lines selected. I need to just deselect here that trace. And then if I hit the delete key, it's gonna leave behind my region that I just created using the convert tool. So now I can select that region, and here under kind, I can change that to polygon cutout. Now, when I report the polygons, you see here that it does clear off the ground here on the top layer, but you can see here on the internal layer, it doesn't clear off that ground. So why is this important? Well, in a lot of cases, you may need to have uniform ground, for example, here on layer six or on some of these other internal layers, especially in this case that we're looking at with these blind vias. Now, sometimes you also need to have that same anti-pad, but on the ground plane below the vias. So for example, down here on layer eight. So to move this polygon cutout to layer eight, we can just select the layer drop down right here and then I can select ground four, which is my layer eight in my stack up. And then I'm gonna paste my copy of my cutout right here in that same spot. And then again, when I go to repour all the polygons, it puts this polygon cutout on layer eight. So now we also have that anti-pad on the ground plane below where these blind vias terminate. So sometimes you need to do that with blind and buried vias. But we don't have that polygon cutout down here on the ground layer for layer six or the ground layer for ground layer five. So that's gonna allow signals on layer four or layer two to then route with uniform ground on both sides. So just to summarize, if we have blind and buried vias, I always strongly recommend using polygon cutouts to define the anti-pads. Typically in cases where you're using blind and buried vias, you're probably operating at higher channel bandwidths anyways, and you're probably going to need to use different anti-pad sizes on different layers, and that's of course where you would then want to use polygon cutouts to define those anti-pads. Once you have these drawn, you can actually copy these anti-pads to your other differential pairs that have the same geometry. Just select them as a group, copy with one of the vias as a reference, and then you can see here, I can paste these on my next differential vias. I can then repour all the polygons, and you can see here, I get the exact same anti-pad design on those layers. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. I always love getting your questions about working in Altium. So if you ever have a great question, you can of course leave it in the comment section and it just might end up in one of these videos. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. We'll see you next time.